All right, Arizona. Uh, this comes from Michael Knowles from 12 News, KPNX, somewhere in Arizona. Oh, uh, well, Phoenix. <clears throat> Shout out to my Arizona peeps. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how you're doing out there with the marijuana situation. I know, you know, for the most part, not any, not most people are as avid of marijuana uh, consumers as I am. So if for some reason your marijuana law sucked and you couldn't get good cannabis and you know it's expensive or whatever, you know, I'm I'm sorry, but you guys didn't smoke that much weed in the first place but anyway you you're the one that moved to Arizona but anyway shout out to my Arizona friends because I'm not about to give you any good news if you really was hoping for some good news but what you got here is proposition 205 which will be on the ballot in November first bad news is is it probably won't even pass but if it does and I am putting a big if on there it might be okay. It might be an okay marijuana policy. The group behind the policy is Marijuana Policy Project. You might hear me quote them and read from their uh, website because they are the foremost authority on marijuana policies in America and they are behind a lot of the marijuana legalization movements that you might be cheering for yourself on your couch or on your Facebook feed. So, anyway, they are... Uh, there, they're, do, they're they're working for you now. There's a short timeline for mail-in ballots, which are scheduled to be printed within the next few weeks. But the the first, the only good news so far is that there was uh, some kind of anti thing that was going on where they were trying to make this so it didn't make the ballot, and that that got shut down. They had a bunch of fake signatures. I think I did a story about it or something. I don't know. I, I definitely read about how it was shady, so it didn't. They didn't. They didn't get approved. Their ballot initiative flopped, and the marijuana legalization question will be on there. Again, it's uh, Pro Proposition 205. If voted into law, it won't take effect till September 1st, 2018. Uh, Yes, I did say it won't take effect until September 1st, 2018. That's correct. You did hear that right. I didn't... There isn't a typo. It's it's really what it says. Unbelievably so. I don't know if there's some kind of a decriminalization window between now and then where, hey, we voted for the law in November and you're getting... Say, like, you got pulled over in December with a little bit of weed. Um... Do they give you, like, 2016 treatment or 2018 treatment? I don't understand it. So legislative language is notoriously difficult to parse, as they clearly say. And as usual, if I mention uh, that there will be something that you could read further, then I probably will, if I remember, to include the link in the description below. But there is a description of Prop 205, not a description, but a complete read. You can read the whole thing, and I will try to provide the link below, but if I don't, it basically is just uh, Prop 205, Arizona, Google it, you can probably find it for, on their government website. But here you go with uh, the nuts and bolts of it, like I said, as reported from uh, Michael Knowles from KPNX. Consumer effects. People 21 or older would be allowed to use marijuana products out of public sight. The drug would not be allowed in schools and employers would still be able to prohibit employees from marijuana use. Landlords could also bar tenants from keeping or smoking marijuana in their homes. So until the law passes, maybe they don't have any say in that. <laughs> Additionally, it would be against the law to drive while under the influence of marijuana, though other states have had difficulty policing this portion of their laws. And good luck with that. There's never going to be a time when you can say that someone's too high to drive unless they're too high to drive, and they probably won't drive if they are. Those who smoke or otherwise use marijuana in public could be subject to a $300 fine. Uh, people would be allowed to have up to one ounce of marijuana at a given time, and they'd be able to grow up to 
six plants in their own homes without having to apply for a cultivator license. Now, again, I don't know if that, does that, if we say, you know, if we're in Arizona and we vote yes in November, all of a sudden it's December, and we heard, yeah, you voted yes for this. Do you get to start growing marijuana or not? Like, I don't understand that. That's just, uh, it seems irrational to say that you passed a law in November of 2016, but you can't grow weed until September of 2018. It doesn't make any sense. We'll look more into that later, I guess. People would be allowed up to one ounce, blah, blah, blah. Pot shop licensing. Current medical marijuana dispensaries would have the chance to apply for a recreational license, and other potential store owners could also apply. I heard there wasn't a whole lot of dispensaries throughout Arizona, but anyway, the application fee would be $5,000, and if approved, a license would cost, are you ready, $20,000. I'm about to do another report soon about how there's people lining up for these coveted limited licenses as usual whenever this kind of a legalization occurs the legislative style they're always gonna hand it off to their buddies right and here they are handing it off to their buddies again in the form of pricing people like me right out of the market there's no way I'd be able to give a five thousand dollar fee that might get churned down I don't know what you get back on that I know in uh, the medical marijuana in Maryland, you only get half of that five back. And then a license would cost 20,000 bucks in Arizona. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a report on these licenses and how people are lining up for them. The people that are lining up for them are millionaires and billionaires and big business tycoons and cops and old sheriffs and old jail owners and college deans and stuff you know the same people that were lining up in Maryland for those ones and the same people that'll be lining up in Ohio and wherever else the legislative branch says hey hey homie come over here and get some of this because I just priced it right out of the grassroots people I don't even know if there was a grassroots thing in Arizona but if there was I feel sorry for y'all looking at this happening anyhow let's go on we, no weed bars will be allowed until at least 2020 because no business would be able to apply for a license to allow marijuana use inside the business until that point and maybe later. Who knows where that even question came from, but whatever, you know, weed bars, I don't, I've never even heard of a weed bar. Weed isn't designed to get you sociably intoxicated so that you can act dumb and have sex with strangers, <laughs> so I don't know what a weed bar is. The number of shop licenses granted cannot exceed 10% of the number of liquor sales or liquor sales licenses in the state. I am mad as hell about that. Matter of fact, I'm going to do a report about the WikiLeaks on the fact that the liquor lobby, among others, are basically controlling the narrative in the government, government uh, people like congressmen and senators and people that are on TV a lot, pundit, uh, friendly representatives they're not representing us they're representing these guys they're representing the liquor controllers the liquor lobbyists and it's it's terrible anyway we go on where does the money go that's the big question how is this, how is this legalized marijuana thing going to help Arizona well according to the language paying for the upkeep of the marijuana department 80% of the revenue would go to school districts and charter schools weighted based on the number of students. Now I like that better than wherever it was where a lot of the money was going to uh, the cops, <laughs> the police, straight up like 35 or more percent going to the police. So anyway, 20% revenue would go to the state's health department for public educations on the harms of drug use, including marijuana and alcohol. I think that was where everybody came in the, in the room and they, they hammered out a compromise. How stupid. Um, cities and towns would also get half the licenses fees from shops within their boundaries. Wow, that's a lot of money. But they already paid that licensing fee to the state, so give it back to the city, give some of that to the city just for the heck of it, whatever. So when it comes to the governing of this law, the Republican governor again Every time these laws pop up or the legislative branch is the ones that's hammering them out and they're giving it away to all their buddies, 
it always is Republicans, but I mean, you're, you, are you surprised? This is Arizona. They're so Republican that they're, they're just red, and it ain't because of their sunburn. They're rednecks, and they're Republicans, and there's a lot of uh, Latinos there, and they're really Catholic and religious, and they don't like marijuana either. Uh, but anyway, I'm just kind of getting slippery slope on, on politics about this. But, you know, Doug Ducey's one of these kind of guys that gets up there and makes fun of Donald Trump by imitating him and doing Trump imitations. And that's supposed to make him look like he's not supporting Trump, but he is and what he's saying and his jokes are falling flat because they are uh, bird calls to other right-wing extremist uh, philosophies. I could do a whole story about Ducey. But let's just say he's just a typical Republican that's going to do whatever. And he has the task of appointing a director to the Department of, Medi of Marijuana Licenses and Control, which will regulate marijuana in the state. He will also appoint seven people to the Marijuana Commission. Wait for it. Four completely independent of the marijuana industry and three from within it. So he's going to stack the deck against the marijuana people that know about marijuana and want to protect the industry with probably business business leaders and uh, people from the pharmaceutical industry, I'm guessing. These appointments would run for three years. No more than four people could be from a single political party and no more than two from a given country. So that no more than four can... So you can't totally overrun it. It's got to be four to three. You can't have five to two. What's the difference? It's a majority country, man. It's not like the Senate where they make rules where you have to have super majorities and stuff. An investigations unit, of course, would be also under the umbrella of the department looking into unlicensed sales of marijuana and sales to those under the age of 21. Like, you didn't know that was going to happen. So the cops get something. And they're doing it because they're going to make sure that your little bitch ass don't try to grow weed and get involved in your little circle of friends that you might have a black market with that could just barely pay your bills and maybe provide you some free smoke. Nope, that's going to be completely out of the question. And that that's going to wrap it up for that story. I, I don't really want to get too more in depth with it. I mean, I've already I've already spent too much time in Arizona because to me, I don't think these things are even going to pass, man. Arizona is a red as hell state. It's so red. It's it's just it's bloody. It's a blood red state. So it ain't happening, man. Goodbye, Arizona, and good luck. I hope you do whatever you can.